here at Great Southern as we try to do every Thursday. Last week we did it on Wednesday night over there at my place, Hunter. Had a good time, enjoyed it over there. Glad you and Haley came over there. Haley Pruitt, our producer. This is Hunter Pritchett, and uh, been here since you were a little baby. Knee high to a grasshopper here at Great right. Southern Outdoors. And of course, Rex Pritchett's outside. He's watching us, I'm sure. I'm Steve Long. Uh, we got JD here tonight. JD works in our office and she does a little bit of guiding on the side. So uh, we're coming to you live and we hope you join us. If you got any questions, you know, all you got to do is type it out. Haley will relay it to us. We want to give shout outs to folks tonight. But Hunter, last week, I couldn't find you on the Thursday night. You were headed to the beach. You were headed down to the Gulf Shores. That's all we had to do. We had to do on Wednesday. That's right. Had to get down to the beach early. Well, I just want to cover it just a little bit because a lot of people are excited. We got snapper season going on in Alabama and our state waters here, and you know it's a big time down in the Gulf. It's uh, it a is. lot of folks headed that way. I know it was crowded. It was. Give us a recap. So I know you went down Thursday, a little and bit. it started on Friday. It did. It started at 12:01 a.m. Friday, but a little bit of a recap of how the weekend went, Steve. I'm sorry you had to miss it, but man, it it was something that a lot of people could have missed just because of how crowded it was with Memorial Day and thankful for everybody that served for our country. But jam packed Friday morning at the at the ramp right there at Orange Beach Pass at 12 o'clock in the morning is when we got there. There were several boats there. You couldn't get to the jetties, so you had to wait till about sunrise to even get to the jetties. You're talking about five foot swells, six foot swells, and you couldn't do nothing with it. Especially if you're in a smaller boat, you know, we were running a 24 footer, but you know, still you don't want to risk that going out. But a lot of people on the water, we caught our limit, caught some good size snapper, 15, 20 pound snapper. I heard a lot of other people catching snapper, catching good size snapper. I think everybody limited out that knew where they needed to go. Um, the public reefs were, were on fire. Yeah. I know a lot of guys had private numbers. Uh, I talked to both and I think everybody did well. And that was also Saturday, it was a good day too, but now Sunday and Monday was kind of difficult because you were talking seven foot swell. So Ooh. Haley and I and Leroy and Stephanie were not, we weren't going to do that. So we kind of laid back and I think we kind of took it easy, you know, just relaxing. But well, that's the reason we weren't here last week. Hunter was off goofing off while the rest of us here had to stay home. Don't say you were working because you weren't working. I QDMA, QDMA. But, uh, you know, it, one thing about the state of Alabama, hunting, fishing, loving every day in the great state of Alabama, snapper season's in on the weekends, even though y'all did, I believe, got to Memorial Day. Yes, sir. And uh, so, you know, coming up, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I, I think for, is it 40, 43 days? It, it, well, the season ends July 19th. But now, if they don't, we, if they don't reach their quota, yes. I believe they may extend it. Yeah, so. and weather's going to have a lot to do with that. But, um, you know, Hunter's back now. If y'all see, what type of boat have you got? I got a 24-foot 20, uh, Edgewater. Center console, but it's got the Great Southern logo on the side. You'll see Hunter's truck. It's got the Great Southern logo. So you guys out there, if you see the truck, you see the boat, you know, stop and wave, say hey. And, uh, you know, we like to enjoy the outdoors, too. We're not just here to guide. And, but we like to hunt and we like to fish also. We like to get those opportunities. And that's why we like for you folks to come up to Union Springs, Alabama, and enjoy with the resources we got here at Great Southern. Now, Hunter, we got a hog hunt, and yes. we've had two or three of them already. We start those in the summertime, and you came back here, I believe, Monday afternoon. You're getting Correct. ready for the hunters to come in tomorrow, Friday. Tell me the structure of a hog hunt, what y'all did all week long to prepare for these folks coming from all across the nation. So, we just finished Memorial Weekend, coming back on this hog hunt this weekend. Uh, Leroy and I, we started out Tuesday, rebating the, the, the stands, uh, you know, these stands when you get to them, you're going to have a feeder sitting within 50 yards of you, you can either be in a box house, a ladder stand as far as a single or a double ladder, and we have a variety of different tripods um, and a variety of box houses from elevation to ground level, but when you get to these stands, that feeder sitting within 50 yards in front of you, you know, we got it set for three different times of the day, so we're trying to put as much feed out on the ground as possible. Uh, these hogs are used to these feeders. We try to bring these hogs in, and it's part of an eradication program. You know, uh, Dad and I, we just put, you know, several tons of, of iron plate feeds in the ground for the growth of our deer to have, you know, good forage food, you know, to, to bring, you know, bigger horns. But to kill these hogs, it's helping us on our deer. And this is one reason why we're doing it. But if you're looking for a hog hunt, 
you know, we do it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, you come in at Friday at noon. You check in with JD in the office or Ginger, who's ever, whichever lady's here for the day. And when you get done checking in, you meet your guide, you meet your cooks in the kitchen. We're going to have a big meal prepared for you at 5 p.m. We're going to sit down and have an orientation, discuss our rules and regulations with you and the state laws. And then my guys are going to show you how to operate lights, uh, show you what you need to be doing in the stands, show you how you need to be shooting a rifle at these animals, uh, and te you know, tell you how we do our quartering processing. You know, we do we do it all from uh, quartering down to making sure you have plenty of ice in your cooler before you leave out of here. But you hunt till about I would say 6:30 p.m. to about 11 o'clock Friday night, and then we come back in, get some good sleep because we have an awesome private bedrooms situation you know it's all top of the line resort style setups this is not a hunting club so you all have private rooms and private baths and then you wake up at four o'clock the next morning and get back out there again till about 9 a.m you have a big a big breakfast after that you know how good it is i mean it's a five-star meal just like our dinners are and then you can either shoot sporting clays in the afternoon you can go fishing you can take your nap. We provide shotguns. We also provide fishing poles. Uh, if you have your own shotgun, you're more than welcome to bring that. If you have your own fishing, fishing setups, you're more than welcome to bring that. We have beautiful lakes on the property. We have a beautiful 12 stations, state certified course. Uh, and we do all that between 3 and 4 p.m. before we go back out uh, on our next hunt, in which we stay, you know, till midnight, sometimes even sunrise, however guys are going to do it. It's all how bad they want to stay. It's all how bad you want to do it. It's all how bad you want to do it. The accommodations, the food, it's just, it's a 10 out of 10 here at Great Southern Outdoors. It's, it's good stuff. Uh, the way we treat you, it's going to be Southern hospitality. Hunter, what amazes me is how people come here to Alabama, especially guys from Pennsylvania, New York, Wisconsin, Minnesota. I just we, had some guys from Wisconsin just called me this morning. Cheeseheads. From this past hunt that says, what do you have for opening weekend next year? You know, they came in on the second hunt. They're ready to get back down here. And they're wanting to spend an additional day. So if you're looking for an additional day, if you come from a long way of traveling, you're more welcome to do that. Well, that's right. And But they're crazy about the hogs. You know, there's a lot of states, they don't have that opportunity. People looking to book a hunt, to get out, you don't have the opportunity, you don't have hogs in your state, now's the time. And you know, we'll let you sit out there all day if you want to sit out there all day. I don't recommend it because it we gets don't. hot in Alabama. And uh, of course, I think it's getting hot across the nation it's, right it's now. Been I've got some the friends in Pennsylvania, it's 90 degrees, in New York it's 90 degrees. But when they find out we've got hogs, man, this is a destination it location. I mean, that's why it's called a hog wild come. blowout. Yes, that's right. And it's very inexpensive. You can go check it out on the website, greatsouthernoutdoors.com. Just check it out. Uh, it, it's not expensive. It's not. It's five hundred dollars plus hundred dollars for for your guide fee. And but, but that's but, cleaning. You but know you know, I mean? you know, a lot of people. We, we have you know varieties of hunters that come in the house. We get guys says, well, what does this take care of? Well, let me explain that to you. You can go to Georgia. You can go to Alabama, and you can do a two or three hour nighttime thermal hunt. For four hundred dollars, you don't get lodging, you don't get meals, and you only get a trophy fee. You only get one haul. That's right. That's Here, right. that takes care of your lodging, private rooms, and private baths, three meals a day. Okay, your guides and all the hauls you want to shoot. Also takes care of your fuel and everything you need to get into and from the woods. So if you look at it, the hunt is free. The hunt's free. Because the lodging and the meals are the whole entire thing. And all you're doing is paying for your guy fee. I mean, that's a great deal. And if, you got, if you have 10 hogs, if you kill 10 hogs, Steve, you pay the man 100 bucks. That's right. I mean, it's good stuff. There's a lot of preparation that goes to that. It helps us do the eradication, helps us keep the hogs. We really don't want the hogs, but we've turned them into a positive. If you talk to anybody in Alabama, they'll tell you hogs are a big negative. But, uh, you know, people want to come hunt, hunt and have a good time. You know, uh, Margaret and I, and Margaret came with me tonight, we're going to have a meal here. We're going to have a shrimp, shrimp bowl here tonight. Nice. You know, we now, are you JD. Ms. Marshall, Ms. We had Dustin Connection hook him up. And, you know, I got some of that famous well, cocktail sauce. We know sauce. how he is. He came and cooked a ribeye. Well, I got, I got a watermelon I'm going to cook. I brought a watermelon, too. Easy, so. Steve. Yeah, just slice that booger up and we'll Easy. go for it. But, yeah, we're going to have a good meal tonight, good uh, fellowship. But coming in the driveway, 
you know, we're driving up to the driveway, and guess what we see? What do you see? That's a figure. Two deer. Really? Two deer. Her eye's not as trained as mine is, but, you know, I picked it up. Where right was there. the other seven? I don't know. No, <laughs> my, I wasn't trained either. But, you know, we have got some opportunities for this deer season. Uh, with, with the situation with Corona, and Alabama is open up. It's wide open. I mean, you saw that this weekend at the beach. I mean, people are looking to go. If you're interested in booking a deer hunt, you need to do it early. Absolutely. You need to do it early. And all you got to do is go to our website and or call us on the phone. You'll have JD or Ginger or maybe Rex or you, you answer call us at 334-738-5066 or go to our website www.greatsouthernoutdoors.com. But, but we, let me stop you on that now. Uh -oh. Because if you're looking for a rut hunt in Alabama, that needs to be booked within the next couple of weeks. Because if you're looking at at least a month or two months from now and you're looking for those prime dates, you're not going to find them. Well, I mean, and I'll well, tell you, all you folks out there that live out of the state of Alabama, if you live in the state of Alabama, we get a lot of people that come in here that hunt deer that live right here in the home state. You know, there's a lot of guys, a lot of y'all out there, you love to deer hunt, but you're working all the time. So you don't have time to plant. You don't mm -hmm. have time to bush hog. You don't have time to feed. You don't have time to manage your place. This is the place to come. When you come, you do a three-day hunt. We do a three or five day. Absolutely. I mean, we'll, we'll structure it any way you want to. We have a lot of corporations that they'll come in and get five or six days where they're bringing in clients and entertaining. We can do it. So but, I want to talk about it for a little bit. You know, when you're talking about you guys that, that can't get their day situated, they don't have time to get in the woods, they don't have time to plant and plow. When you come into the lodge, we do a Monday evening till a Thursday morning hunt, and then a Thursday evening till Sunday morning hunt. You guys are getting three meals a day, lodging, private rooms, private baths, one buck, eight pork butter, two does, and two hogs. But now when you get here, you're gonna meet your guy just like on hog hunts. Your guy is gonna go over your territory. He's gonna be with you one-on-one. -on -one. He's gonna show you what deer you're gonna be seeing on camera, or what deer we hope to see that are on camera. Should tell you a little bit about what food plots you have around you, what kind of bedding zones you're gonna have. Uh, natural trails, you know, what they're hitting right now. And, you know, you and him are going to be together one-on-one -on -one the entire three days that you're here, three nights, four days. And so, you know, it's, it's really a big getaway for everybody. Yeah, Alabama, and it's unique, our season, our bow season comes in October 15th. Now, there's a deal right there. You can do a three-day bow hunt. How much? $900. $900. That's honey, that's food, that's lodging, and you know, from October 15th to October 25th, there is a uh, bucks only, and then uh, from the 25th all the way to February 10th. If you want to hunt with a bow, you can hunt with a bow, but our gun season, I believe this year it comes in November 21st. I believe so. It's the first Saturday, it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving, but um, there's a lot of opportunities there. A lot of people that are going to come, you're going to see deer. You're going to see deer. Now, a lot of guys, they don't want to shoot a doe. No, sir. I like those guys myself. I love them. I, I love, love those guys. I love them. You know, the guys that truly want to hunt. You know, Hunter, I want to go back to bow season. Yeah. And I know we want to talk about the rut this evening and, and trying to get people, you know, interested. And especially we got some openings during the rut. And if you are interested, you need to jump on it. You need to jump on it within the next five or six days. You need to do it tomorrow morning. But, you know, I was thinking about it today. I was driving down the road because I do a little bit of guiding. I've guided here. I love to see people come in with climbers. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of Jim and Marsha. Well, Jim and Marsha is a prime example. They're, you couldn't ask for a better, a better family right there. You know, Haley and I, we've made Jim and Marsha like our second parents. They're, you know, they're just awesome people to be around. We try to go visit them, they try to visit us. But hardcore hunters, uh, they know what they're doing. They know the time of the year they like to be here. They know when the acres are dropping. They keep up to date with us. You know, when you come in, we're not just someone you meet. We're going to end up being family when you leave out of here. So we try to keep up throughout the year to know when you need to be here. You know, we try to keep you up to date on everything. But, you know, they bring climbers. Not only them, but we have probably 20% of our clientele that come in bring their own climbers. Oh, yeah. And I always said, if we, if we could tell everyone who books a hunt with us, if you have a climber, throw it in the back of the truck. It doesn't matter if it's the first time you've ever climbed, if you're learning, we can teach you. Um, or if you've been an experienced climber all your life and that's all you like to sit at, all you like to sit in, 
we love for you to have that climber here. Well, let me say this. If you're going to bring your climber, make sure and bring your safety harness. Absolutely. And we and provide tether and everything. Too. Yeah, but it, it's best to have. I like a hunter safety suit. Absolutely. I mean, it's easy, it's quick, and you're done. But the advantage to having that climber is, you know, deer patterns change during the year, and then we're able to put you in a different location, a different spot. As things change, we can we can move move you. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if you got a climber, we suggest you bring that if you want to. Climbers aren't for everybody. I mean, I'm I'm getting old. Rex is getting old. You're not gonna get Rex and I to oh, climb. That 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 20 foot fall hurts a lot worse than what it used to. And hopefully, nobody falls or gets hurt or anything like that. But, but it is mandatory that if you bring a climber here and you're sitting in the climber, you have to wear that safety harness. Absolutely, and there's no question about that whatsoever. Haley, who all we had uh, reach out to us so far? Anybody got any questions? Um, Craig Ring said he is ready to come back and see y'all again. Come um, on with it, buddy. Come on, Craig. <laughs> Matt Jones, Brooke Wascom, Dalton St. Sin, Shannon Markley. Did I say that wrong? You did. No, you did good. Okay. Andrew Danzy, Travis Lee, Robert Matthews, Connor Jackson, Tommy Thompson. Dalton Swindle, uh, Charlie Oglesby, Robert Matthews, Brian Keeter, Blake Murphy, Josh Powell, Angelo Costanza, James Vandenberg, and Will Foster. Man, there's so many good folks right there in that list that are out there and, and they're watching us right now. And we appreciate that's a big that a lot of them are customers and friends. Well, the last name she just said, Will Foster. Will Foster does all the work for us here at Great Southern Outdoors. He does an awesome work, as you can see this this turkey here. Um, if you guys come here and like what we were just talking about, you know, hog hunting, deer hunting, turkey hunting, and you take that nice trophy animal, Will Foster's the guy that does it. Yeah. You know, Hunter, but going back to deer season, Alabama, our rut is really different than most all the other. I mean, most of you guys are finished hunting, our rut's kicking in. And I think we're going to have a full moon late January this year, buddy. I couldn't tell you the exact date. I know it off the top of my head, but it's not flowing through right now correctly. But I think we're going to have a late rut this year, uh, but I think the pre-rut is going to be awesome. But I mean, I think it's going to be a good year all the way around. We're getting a lot of rain right now. We're getting a lot of water. That helps promote that acorn growth. So I would think both seasons are going to be hot. I think it's going to be hot the whole time. I mean, but January and February, and we go to February 10th, but especially from about January 8th all the way to oh, yeah. February 10th. It's tough to book a spot here at Great Southern Outdoors to come deer hunting during that time. And right now we've got a few openings. We would love for y'all to call. We'd love for y'all to book if you're interested. Um, you know, we, we, we've we got those openings, and I want to urge you, urge you, if you're really interested in hunting the rut in Alabama, give us a holler because we'd love to have you here. You know, Steve, a lot of people talk about Alabama's rut. You know, I've, was, I've been able to harvest just myself some nice bucks late season in that rut. And that rut was, you know, the last two weeks of January, that last week, and the the 10 days that we've gotten extended into February has been very, very successful. I got to tell you, when that first happened, I was dead set against it. You were. I, Cause I'm gonna tell you, as a guide, you start, and you, we never stop. We never stop at Drake Southern, I mean, Let's face it, I mean, if you want to get started, we got deer season October 15th. Goes all the way to February 10th. Yeah. But the whole time we're doing quail, we're doing continental pheasant shoots. Yeah. But then when you get out all that, you go into turkey. Then from turkey, you go to hog. Yeah. And then from hog, it's like back to deer again. So uh, I was like, holy smokes, man, we're about to Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. But it was a great decision by our state. One, our conservation department, they look out for all of us. They want us to be happy. And they did a great job doing that. The majority of the guys, they were saying, hey, we're not seeing the bucks that we think we should see. We, you know, our well, they were saying that they're not getting the rut. That's right. And, and it was true. And our conservation department, under Chris Blankenship and Chuck Sykes, those guys have been doing studies for years. And it's funny. Alabama is a little bit different. we got five different rut stages in Alabama. You might go over to Ufala over there by Georgia, and you're looking at November, December. Yep. But right here in the Black Belt, we're looking at January 8th all the way to February 10th. Just remember this. You know, a lot of people think, Hunter, that a buck is like a big old a bull. Mm -hmm. But he's not. He's not. He doesn't have all those cows out there. Mm -hmm. A buck, the average is going to do breed two or three times. 
Two or three times. Did you know this? I mean, we've got over this. I'm listening before. to it now. Absolutely. I've heard it Two or three times. And I mean, it's such a short period. So there's a lot of times when the does go into estrus the first time, it may not take. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to drop that egg, and 28 days later, they're going to oh, go yeah. back into estrus again. I'm not a biologist. I learned this from a biologist at QDMA, Quality Gear Management Association. I think you should go in business. No, the, I am in business. <laughs> I am in business. But, uh, but, but Steve, uh, you know, talking about rut, let's go from rut to pre-rut. That first week of rifle season on into the first two weeks of December. Then you got a little lull right there in December. What are we doing in December? The kids hunt. We got kids hunts going on. But what we got else? quail hunts we going got on. Quail hunts going on. As well. Man, now that's a social hunt. You know, we can take 16, 20 people. We've got that many guys. We got the dogs. And if you're looking to shoot and have fun, you can't beat quail. I mean, quail is a lot of fun. It's a social type hunt. You're not sitting in the stand by yourself being quiet. You can be as loud as you want. Don't get too loud because you get on the nerves. But, uh, you know, we have a good time out in the field. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The Continental Pheasant Shoots, and we always do a public shoot the first Saturday in October. Um, I worked with one of our customers this week who called me. He's been going to South Dakota for about seven or eight years. Don't need any more. Well, I put, I've structured together for a 10 to 15 person pheasant shoot for him and his customers and his clientele. They've been going out to South Dakota. They hunt for about two or three days. Very, very expensive. So we structured something for them and their budget, and I think they're going to be coming to Great Southern Outdoors in, uh, in, I believe it's November, before deer season comes in. Because I've been going out to South Dakota, October, November, and South Dakota is definitely your pheasant capital it's, of the world. From what I hear, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but you can only kill three roosters a day. Not in Alabama. No, on our pheasant shoot. Not shoots. on Steve Long's pheasant shoot. No, 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 it's, it's over. over. It's over. So if you've got a corporation, you're looking to do a pheasant shoot, you're looking to entertain you bankers out there, look, our economy's coming back. Watch the stock market this yes, week. Sir. It's coming back. We're going to beat this. I, we already have. I mean, Alabama's wide open. But if you're looking to entertain your clientele, we're the place for you. we got the lodging, we got the food, we got the animals. Yes, sir. And that's all it takes. Hey, who else chimed in? Bruce Lieberman. That's my buddy Bruce, the Attorney General. He is the, the Attorney of Montgomery. Nice. Yeah. He said you need to stop talking and let Margaret come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hear you. Smart man. Yeah. Well, Steve, look, let's still talk a little bit more about quail. You know, when you guys are looking for a quail hunt, what can you do? As far as, you mean, when, what, what do we what, do? What does our quail hunts consist of? Well, I'll tell you what, man. You're going to get great guides who are all social. No contract yeah. guides right here. That's right. Great Southern Outdoor guides. You're exactly right. We're, we all work here. I mean, and really Great Southern Outdoors, we're a family. I mean, Leroy, Leroy came in last year during deer season. Yes, sir. And he's fit right in. I mean, you know, you got Miranda here. Who, uh, oh. Yeah. The boss is back. The boss is back. So I got, I got that phone call when she was on the way saying, Things are going to change at Great Southern Outdoors. I said, oh, oh the boss is boy. back. But I mean, it is a family atmosphere. We got JD, we got Ginger, we got Rex. Um, so, you know, as far as our quail hunts, all I can say is bring your gun, bring your shells, be hungry, and we're going to take care of you. We're going to take care of you. And uh, we, you, know, you can do it. You, you, we, what we do is, you know, you can do evening hunts, you can do morning hunts. It's just like the pheasant. Right. Most people, this customer I was talking about, I've set it up for three days. We're going to pheasant. He's going to come in on a Thursday, sporting clays Thursday evening, wake up Friday morning, big southern-style breakfast, go out to the pheasant field, shoot pheasants, come back, have a big lunch, go fishing, go sporting clays again, and, I mean, do it again on Saturday, Sunday morning, they leave out of here. I mean, they've got two great pheasant shows, hunts, or pheasant shoots. And, um... You know what? If you want to do four or five days, we can structure it any way you want. And if you'll tell us your budget, we'll be glad to make now it work. there's something you're missing out on. Steve. What am I missing out on? If you're Spain. looking for a deer hunt, yeah, and you want a quail hunt at the same time, we can structure. We can do it. Yeah. A lot of guys come in on our deer hunts, and you know, when we're done hunting that morning, they says, "Hey, what can we do? You know, can we go fishing?" Go shoot sporting plays, 
Well, how about a fun one? It's $300 a person. All the birds you need is about 16 birds. We go on a little midday quill hunt. We get right back in the deer stand right after that. So you get a deer hunt that morning, you get a quill hunt midday, and you can get a deer hunt again that afternoon. You're going to be in bed by 8.30 or yes, sir. Because you're going to be tired. You're going to be tired. A lot. Hey, anybody else chimed in? Sorry about that, Hunter. A lot of times when we're doing our quill hunts, you know, we're running our dogs, we're running our guides. You're going to have a big meal before you go out that morning. You're going to have an awesome morning on the field with our guides and our dogs. Uh, it's, it's an eventful event. You're going to come back in for a good lunch. If you're doing a full day, you're going to get right back on the field about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon, right before sunset, and shoot for about two and a half hours and have another big meal right after that. Yeah. Who else, Hayden? Um, John Eastman, Casey Walker, Jordan Kendrick, Dominique Schilt, Brian Herbert. Okay, all you guys, John Eastman down in Florida, Brian over there in Georgia. Brian's coming for the uh, either yes, the October or the February pheasant shoot. Said he, I'm not going to say who you said. He might be a surprise, but he's bringing somebody with him. And, uh, you know, uh, Dom, Dom's been coming here for years. He does pheasant shoots. I believe he's coming. Dom. I believe he's coming. I think Dom's coming with everything we got. Uh, yeah, and we love that. We love that. You know, one thing about the clientele here at Great Southern, there's a ton of rebooking. But I want to urge everybody out there, take a look at our deer hunts. We have some openings during the rut. It's, if you're going to book the rut hunt in Alabama, you know, Monday's June the 1st. June 1st. And you know what? June the 1st, man. I'm just yeah. rambling along. But you know what? Now's the time to book. Now, you know, if you've got any questions, book. right after we get done with Facebook Live, hop on our main Facebook page, hit the message button, and write us a message. See what, see what kind of questions you got. Yeah. Anybody else, Haley? No? Nope. That's everybody right now. Well, look, guys, we're going to start doing this on a regular basis. I'm not going to let Hunter go snapping fish, snapper fishing without me anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, he got that out of his blood. Did you get it out of your blood? Mm -hmm. Ain't it all out yet. Yeah, not all yet. Hunter's going to fish every chance he gets, just like we hunt every chance we July get. July 19th is the last day, yeah, as the book go. says. There you go. But if you're interested in a hog hunt, quail hunt, pheasant shoot, especially an Alabama deer rut hunt in January all the way to February 10th. And let me tell you, it can happen twice or three times. These deer, it, it's, it's crazy in Alabama. Our rut, the rest of you guys up north or down there like John Eastman in Florida, I mean, your season might be over. We're still going. We're still here, baby. And we want you to come enjoy Great Southern Outdoors right here in Union Springs, Alabama. Hunter, anything else we need to say? Nothing. Tell you what. Destiny Connection call. shrimp are waiting on us. We got a little bit of watermelon. We got some snacks in there. We're going to make hogs of ourselves. And you guys coming hog hunting here in Alabama tomorrow, y'all come on. We're going to have a good time. Check us out, Great Southern Outdoors.